If your vehicle is equipped with keyless enter and go, you can start your vehicle with the push of a button as long as the key fob can be detected by the vehicle. To start the engine, the automatic transmission must be in park or neutral. Just press and hold the brake pedal while pressing the engine start stop button and you're good to go. To turn off the engine using the engine start stop button, place the automatic transmission shift lever in park, then press and release the engine start stop button. To use accessories without starting the vehicle, press the start stop button without pressing the brake pedal. Pressing the engine start stop button once will put the ignition into the ACC or accessories position so you can activate the radio, wipers, and windows. Pressing the engine start stop button a second time puts the ignition into the on run position so you can activate the heating, air conditioning controls, and the instrument cluster. Pressing the engine start stop button a third time returns the ignition switch to the off position. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. If your vehicle is equipped with our innovative automatic temperature control system, you can automatically maintain the climate in the cabin of the vehicle at the comfort level set by the driver and passenger. The system automatically adjusts airflow temperature, airflow distribution, airflow volume, and the amount of outside air recirculation. This maintains a comfortable temperature even under changing conditions. Operation of the system is quite simple. Just touch the Auto Soft key on the touchscreen and then adjust to the temperature you'd like using the up and down soft key arrows on the temperature control. Once the comfort level is selected, the system will maintain that level automatically using the heating and air conditioning systems. You will experience the greatest efficiency by simply allowing the system to function automatically. The system can be controlled manually by touching the auto control again to turn the auto function off. If you prefer, you can also operate the automatic temperature control using the hard keys located under the touchscreen. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. If your vehicle is equipped with heated front seats, the controls are located on the touchscreen. Press the control once to choose high. Press it a second time to choose low. Pressing it a third time turns the heater off. If the high-level heating is selected, the system will automatically switch to low-level heating after 60 minutes of continuous operation. Operation on the low setting also turns off automatically after 45 minutes. Also, under the Control Soft key, you'll see Screen Off. Pressing this soft key turns the display screen off. To turn the display screen on again, just touch the screen. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. If your vehicle is equipped with a heated steering wheel, that means no more popsicle fingers on cold days. The control for the heated steering wheel is located on the touchscreen. Just touch the control to activate the system. The switch indicator light will illuminate. The heated steering wheel will stay on for up to 70 minutes before automatically shutting off. To turn the heated steering wheel off manually, touch the control again. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. All of the lights except the hazard warning lights, headlight high beams, and flash to pass are controlled by switches to the left of the steering column on the instrument panel. Turn the control to the first detent for parking lights. Turn to the second detent for headlights. You can also turn the control to the auto position. In this position, the headlights will turn on or off automatically 
based on the surrounding light levels. The dimmer control switch controls your instrument panel lights and interior lighting. With the parking lights or headlights on, rotating the dimmer control upward will increase the brightness of the instrument panel lights. Rotate to the next detent position to brighten the odometer and radio controls. Rotate to the last detent to turn on the interior lighting. To activate the front fog lights, turn on the parking lights or the low beam headlights and push in the headlight switch control. Pressing the headlight switch control in a second time will turn the fog lights off. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. Your Electronic Vehicle Information Center, or EVIC, features a driver interactive display that is located in the instrument cluster. This system conveniently allows you to view a variety of useful information by pressing the buttons mounted on the steering wheel. You can get information about system status, vehicle information warning message displays, tire pressure monitoring system if equipped, trip functions, and much, much more. Use the buttons on the steering wheel to navigate to the various displays. Use the up and down arrows to scroll through the menu. Use the right arrow to enter and select features and functions. The back button will return you to the previous menu. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. Did you know you can customize your vehicle's personal settings just the way you want? You can set up your vehicle your way. Let's give you some examples. You can lock your vehicle from outside with just the push of the lock button on your key fob. The turn signals will flash and the horn will sound to let you know the vehicle is locked. Nice, eh? Unless it's nighttime and you'd just as soon not wake the kids or the neighbors. Well, you can change those settings using your touchscreen. Here's how. Select More on the touchscreen and then Settings. Now, you can select Doors and Locks and then the feature you want to customize. In this case, Horn with Lock. There will be a check mark next to the feature if it is active. Touch the feature bar to turn the check mark off and deactivate the feature. It's as easy as that. The horn is off and the kids and neighbors stay asleep. Let's talk about a few more. Your vehicle is equipped with a feature that will automatically turn on your headlights approximately 10 seconds after turning on your windshield wipers if the headlight switch is in the auto position. It's a nice feature. It's also a feature you can turn on or off if you like. Let's go through the procedure. Again, under Settings, scroll through this menu until you reach Lights. Select Lights and then Headlights with Wipers. If there is a check mark next to the feature, it means the feature is active. Just touch the feature bar if you'd like to turn off the check mark and deactivate the feature. Your vehicle may already be programmed to unlock all the doors if the vehicle is in park and the driver's door is opened. It's a feature called Auto Unlock on Exit. If your vehicle is not set up this way and you'd like this feature turned on, it's easy enough to do. Under Settings, scroll through this menu until you reach Doors and Locks. Now, you can select Auto Unlock on Exit. If there is a check mark next to the feature, it means the feature is active. Touch the feature bar if you'd like to turn off the check mark and deactivate the feature. OK, now that you've got the procedure down, you can customize many other features as well. You can choose to Unlock Driver Door Only on First Press or Unlock All Doors on First Press. You can select Lights and then Headlight Off Delay, and choose between a 0, 30, 60, or 90 second delay before the headlights turn off after the engine has been turned off. It's a great feature that can light your way to the door at night, even if the door is a ways away. So set up your vehicle your way. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information.
Your vehicle is equipped with a Tire Pressure Monitoring System, or TPMS. It measures pressure in your four road tires and sends the tire pressure readings to your vehicle. The tire pressure monitoring light, located in the instrument cluster, will turn on and an audible chime will sound if the pressure is low in one or more of your tires. Once the light is illuminated, one or more of your tires are underinflated and need to be inflated to the manufacturer's recommended tire pressure. You can find that information on the placard located on the inside edge of the driver's side door. Now, even if the light turns on for a short time and then turns off, your tire pressure still needs to be checked. Remember, tire pressures change with air temperature change. Keep this in mind when checking tire pressure inside a garage, especially in the winter. Tire pressure may increase from heat during operation. Do not reduce this normal pressure buildup or your tire pressure will be too low. Here's an important note, though. Do not try to use the TPMS warning light as a tire pressure gauge as it does not automatically turn off when the proper pressure is returned to the tire. When the tire is properly inflated, you may have to drive for a bit before the system resets itself and turns the warning light off. The warnings may stay on, however, until all tires have been properly inflated. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. Here's hoping you'll never have to, but just in case, let's talk about changing a flat tire. The jack and jack handle are stowed underneath a cover in the rear storage bin in the cargo area. The spare tire is stowed underneath the rear of the vehicle and is held in place by a cable winch mechanism. Remove the jack handle components 1, 2, and 3 from storage. Now, you'll need to fit the assembled jack handle over the winch drive nut located in the jack storage area. Rotate the jack handle assembly counterclockwise until the spare tire is on the ground with enough cable slack to allow you to pull the spare tire out from underneath the vehicle. Raise the spare tire upright so the tire's tread is on the ground and then tilt the retainer at the end of the winch cable and remove it from the center of the wheel. Now, you can winch the assembly back up into place underneath the vehicle. Go ahead now and loosen, but do not remove the wheel lug nuts by turning them to the left one turn while the wheel is still on the ground. Make sure you're parked on a firm, level surface safely away from traffic. Avoid ice or slippery areas. Also, make sure the ignition is off, the hazard lights are on, and the parking brake is fully set. Blocking both the front and rear of the wheel diagonally opposite of the jacking position is also a good idea. If changing the right front tire, block the left rear tire. Place the jack underneath the lift area that is closest to the flat tire. Turn the jack screw clockwise to firmly engage the jack saddle with the lift area of the sill flange. Do not raise the vehicle until you are sure the jack is fully engaged. Now, you're ready to raise the vehicle by turning the jack screw to the right. Raise the vehicle only until the tire just clears the surface and enough clearance is obtained to install the spare tire. Remember, minimum tire lift provides maximum stability. Okay, now go ahead and remove the lug nuts and wheel. Position the spare tire on the vehicle with the valve stem facing out. The vehicle could be damaged if the spare tire is mounted incorrectly. Reinstall the lug nuts with the cone-shaped end toward the wheel. Lightly tighten the lug nuts clockwise. Now, you can lower the vehicle by turning the jack screw to the left and remove the jack. Once on the ground, you can finish tightening the lug nuts. Alternate lug nuts until each lug nut has been tightened twice. Maximum effort should be used for final tightening of the lug nuts. It's always a good idea to have the tightness checked with a torque wrench by your authorized dealer or at a service station. Now, just secure the tire, jack, and tools in their proper locations, and you're ready to go. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information.
This is a handy feature. An in-floor storage bin is located behind each front seat. Each 1.6-gallon or 5.9-liter bin can hold up to 12 12-ounce or 0.35-liter cans, plus ice or other items. The removable bin liner allows for easy filling, emptying, and cleaning. To access the bin, pull the door latch release loop upward to release the latch and then forward to open the bin door. Here's a quick note, though. Position the front seat to at least a mid-track position to provide easier access to the storage bin. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. If the vehicle diagnostic system detects a problem with the fuel filler cap or the fuel filler cap is loose, improperly installed, or damaged, a loose gas cap icon will appear in the EVIC. If this occurs, tighten the fuel filler cap properly. If the problem continues, see your authorized service center as soon as possible. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. The multifunction lever, located to the left of the steering wheel, controls the operation of the turn signals, windshield wipers and washer, headlight beam selection, and flash to pass lights. For headlight selection, push the multifunction lever away from you to switch the headlights to high beam. Pull the multifunction lever toward you to switch the headlights back to low beam. And you can signal another vehicle with your headlights by lightly pulling the multifunction lever toward you. This flash to pass feature will cause the headlights to turn on at high beam and remain on until the multifunction lever is released. This talented little lever also operates the windshield wipers and washer when the ignition switch is in the on run position. Rotate the end of the multifunction lever to the first detent for low speed wiper operation or to the second detent for high speed wiper operation. Use the intermittent wiper when weather conditions make a single wiping cycle with a variable pause between cycles desirable. To use the washer, push the multifunction lever inward completely and hold it for as long as washer spray is desired. And here's a great feature. If your vehicle is equipped with auto headlights, your lights will come on when you activate your windshield wipers. When this feature is active, the headlights will turn on approximately 10 seconds after the wipers are turned on if the headlight switch is placed in the auto position. In addition, the headlights will turn off when the wipers are turned off if they were turned on by this feature. If your vehicle is equipped with rain-sensing wipers, this feature senses moisture on the windshield and automatically activates the wipers for you. You can activate the system through your touchscreen display. Refer to your owner's information DVD for details. The sensitivity of the system is adjustable from the multifunction lever. Wiper delay position 1 is the least sensitive and wiper delay position 6 is the most sensitive. Your vehicle is equipped with a rear window wiper. Rotating the center part of the switch forward to the on position will activate the wiper. Rotating the center of the switch all the way forward will turn on the wash function. Your vehicle may be equipped with the smart beam system. This feature provides increased forward lighting at night by automating high beam control through the use of a digital camera mounted on the inside rear view mirror. This camera detects vehicle specific light and automatically switches from high beams to low beams until the approaching vehicle is out of view. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. If your vehicle is equipped with electronic speed control or cruise control, you're going to like this feature. Remember though, cruise control is designed for use in continuous flowing highway traffic and when engaged, can take over accelerator operation at speeds over 25 miles per hour or 40 kilometers per hour. The control is conveniently located right on the steering wheel for easy one-touch operation. To activate your cruise control, push the on-off button. The cruise indicator light in the instrument panel and other displays will let you know that the system is on. To turn the system off, 
push the on-off button a second time. It's best to leave the system turned off when not in use. To set a desired speed with the system on, accelerate to the speed you want to maintain. Then simply press and release the set minus button. Take your foot off the accelerator and the vehicle will operate at the speed you have selected. You can deactivate the system by using a soft tap on the brake pedal, pushing the cancel button, or using normal brake pressure while slowing the vehicle. These actions will not erase your set speed memory. So to resume your previously selected speed, press the RES plus or resume plus button and release. The resume feature can be used at any speed above 20 miles per hour or 32 kilometers per hour. When the cruise control system is on, your speed can be increased by pressing and holding the Resume Plus button. Release the button when the new desired speed is reached and the new speed will be set. And here's a nice touch. Simply tapping the Resume Plus button will result in a one mile per hour increase in speed for each tap. Tap three times and your speed will increase by three miles per hour. With just a touch, this convenient feature allows you to increase your cruise control speed without ever having to take your hands off the wheel. To decrease speed while the cruise control system is on, press and hold the set minus button. Release the button when the desired speed is reached. Tapping the set minus button once will result in a one mile per hour speed decrease. Each time the button is tapped, speed decreases. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. Your vehicle may be equipped with a rear camera system that allows you to see an on-screen image of what is immediately behind your vehicle whenever the shift lever is put into reverse. There is nothing you need to do. The rear camera image will be displayed on the radio display screen located on the center stack of the instrument panel. The camera is located in the light bar over the rear license plate. If snow, ice, mud, or anything else builds up on the camera lens, clean the lens, rinse with water, and dry with a soft cloth. A quick note though, always make sure you carefully look around to check all surrounding areas around your vehicle before backing up. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. Your vehicle may be equipped with the convenience of our Homelink system. Homelink replaces up to three remote controls or handheld transmitters that operate devices such as garage door openers, motorized gates, lighting, or home security systems. The Homelink control buttons are located in the headliner or sun visor. If you haven't programmed any of the Homelink buttons yet, be sure to erase all channels before you begin. To do this, press and hold the two outside buttons for up to 20 seconds until the red indicator flashes. For more efficient training and accurate transmission of the radio frequency signal, it is recommended that a new battery be placed in the handheld transmitter of the device being programmed to Homelink. The Homelink unit is powered by your vehicle's battery and does not require battery replacement. When programming the Homelink system, your vehicle should be parked outside of the garage. If your garage door opener was manufactured after 1995, it may have a rolling code. These garage door openers can be identified by the Learn or Train button located where the hanging antenna is attached to the garage door opener. So let's take a minute and talk about how to program a rolling code. To start, put the ignition in the on run position, but don't start the engine. Place the handheld transmitter 1 to 3 inches or 3 to 8 centimeters away from the home link button you wish to program while keeping the home link indicator light in view. Now, Simultaneously press and hold both the home link button you want to program and the handheld transmitter button. Continue to hold both buttons and observe the indicator light. The home link indicator will flash slowly and then rapidly after home link has received the frequency signal from the handheld transmitter. Release both buttons after the indicator light changes from slow to rapid blinking. Okay, now you're ready for the next steps. At the garage door opener motor in the garage, locate the Learn or Training button. 
It can usually be found where the hanging antenna wire is attached to the garage door opener motor. The name and color of the button may vary by manufacturer. It is not the button normally used to open and close the door. You will have 30 seconds in which to initiate the next step after the Learn button has been pressed, so this might work better as a two-person job. Now, firmly press and release the Learn or Training button, return to the vehicle, or have someone in the vehicle to press the programmed Home Link button twice, holding the button for two seconds each time. If the opener is plugged in and activates, programming is complete. If the device does not activate, press the button a third time for two seconds to complete the training. A quick note though, if your garage door opener was manufactured before 1995, it may have a non-rolling code. So let's take you through programming a non-rolling code. Put the ignition in the on-run position, but don't start the engine. And hold the battery side of your handheld transmitter away from the home link button you wish to program. Place the handheld transmitter 1 to 3 inches or 3 to 8 centimeters away from the home link button while keeping the indicator light in view. Now, simultaneously press and hold both the chosen home link button and the handheld transmitter button until the home link indicator changes from a slow to a rapidly blinking light, then release both the home link and the handheld transmitter buttons. When the indicator changes, it is programmed. It may take up to 30 seconds or longer in rare cases. The garage door may open and close during programming. To check your programming, press and hold the just programmed home link button and observe the indicator light. If the indicator light stays on constantly, then programming is complete and the garage door or device should activate when the home link button is pressed. On vehicles equipped with a security alarm, home link will be disabled if the alarm is active. If you have any problems or require assistance, Please call toll-free 1-800-355-3515 or on the internet at homelink.com for information or assistance. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. Your vehicle may be equipped with one or more 12-volt power outlets. Some can only be used when the ignition is in the on position, while some are powered directly by the battery and can be used any time. Remember though, excessive use of this outlet can drain the vehicle's battery. You will also find a 115-volt AC power inverter. The switch to activate the inverter is located on the touchscreen. The power outlets can be used to power cell phones, electronics, or other low-power devices. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. If your vehicle is equipped with steering wheel audio controls, you can manage your audio system without ever having to take your hands off the steering wheel. The steering wheel audio controls are located on the rear surface of the steering wheel. The left and right controls are rocker type switches with a push button in the center of each switch. On the right hand switch, press the top of the switch to increase the volume. Press the bottom of the switch to decrease the volume. Press the button in the center of the switch to change modes AM, FM, etc. While you're in radio mode, Press the top of the left-hand side switch to seek the next listenable station up from the current setting. Press the bottom of that switch to seek the next listenable station down from the current setting. Press the button in the center of the left-hand side switch to tune to the next preset that you have programmed. Now, if you're in media mode, press the top of the left-hand side switch once to listen to the next track. Press the bottom of that switch once, either to listen to the beginning of the current track or to listen to the beginning of the previous track if it's within one second after the current track begins to play. Press the switch up or down twice to listen to the second track, three times to listen to the third track, and so forth. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information.
for your music, news, and information. We know your vehicle's radio is a pretty important feature. Press the radio hard key to change to a radio mode. Now, you can use the AM, FM, and SAT soft keys to toggle between radio modes. Your audio system allows you to store your favorite radio stations to a convenient one-touch preset. Select the radio band by touching either the AM, FM, or SAT soft key. Now, once you've tuned to a station you'd like to preset, touch and hold one of the preset soft keys at the top of the screen until you hear a confirmation beep. So now let's set the clock. To set the clock, press the settings hard key and then clock. Now you can adjust the hours and minutes using the up and down soft keys. Press the done button to return to the settings menu and save your changes. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the owner's information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. For your music, news, and information, we know your vehicle's radio is a pretty important feature. Press the radio soft key to change to a radio mode. Now, you can use the AM, FM, and SAT soft keys to toggle between radio modes. Your audio system allows you to store your favorite radio stations to a convenient one-touch preset. Select the radio band by touching either the AM, FM, or SAT soft key. Now, once you've tuned to a station you'd like to preset, touch and hold one of the preset soft keys at the top of the screen until you hear a confirmation beep. So now let's set the clock. To set the clock, press the More soft key on the lower right corner of the screen. Press the Settings soft key and then Clock. Now, you can adjust the hours and minutes using the plus and minus soft keys. Press the Back button to return to the Settings menu and save your changes. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or dodge.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information.